All right. Thank you very much for joining everyone. Um, if we can only make sure we're on mute, that would be amazing. Uh, my name's Craig Thompson. I'm the Channel Marketing Manager at Wavelink. Um, so welcome first and foremost to the first of our um, upcoming Info Byte series. These bite-sized sessions are designed to give our community of resellers and customers, vendors, suppliers, and suppliers a deeper understanding of the products we showcase and the key solutions we think businesses need moving forward as we see ourselves to a new normal. Today's session, hosted by our incredible channel enablement manager, Nathan Gibb, will showcase the spectral inversity and when paired with the Sochi application and Amy servers can deliver true performance, efficiency, and productivity gains across multiple industry verti uh, vertical industries, ranging from healthcare, aged care, and manufacturing. This is a strongly in uh, this is a session where we strongly encourage engagement. So please ask any questions you have in the chat box throughout today's event, and we'll also be recording the session and we'll share a link afterwards so you can share with your teams internally. Uh, for more information on our other events coming up this month, I'll direct you to the link in our um, in, in in the chat box that I've provided. Nathan, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Really appreciate it. And welcome, everyone. Um, thanks for taking the time out to join us today. Um, should be a, just a fun uh, info session. I'm literally going to try and cram uh, a lot of key information uh, into obviously a nice short, as we said, bite size uh, info bites of the session. Um, so it might be a case if you're going to see something that you like uh, and you're going to want more information. Um, we can certainly use that information or get you that information after this session uh, and engage with um, some more uh, detailed conversations. So today is literally just going to be a uh, nice snapshot on the Spectral University uh, Enterprise Smartphone, uh, which is basically uh, best in market uh, in terms of um, its capabilities uh, or from that enterprise standpoint and being a smartphone. Compassing that with uh, Spectralink's Amy SAM server as well, which is the main management platform for the Versity. Uh, and then also looking at how we can tie that down uh, and really make it a business focused device with SOTI, um, which is an uh, MDM solution that um, Wavelink as a company also distribute. So I'm sure many of you do know already, but if you don't know, uh, Wavelink as a company, we've been around for over 20 years. Uh, we are the in-country vendor um, and main or the sole dis um, distributor for Spectralink uh, Wi-Fi and decked uh, handset solutions. We also sell uh, Fortinet, DigiM, Spoke, Linkwa, obviously Sochi, who we're going to run through today as well, uh, and Centrac. Uh, um, one of our main verticals, of course, is healthcare, but we also uh, work across many other industries, of course, retail, hospitality, um, manufacturing, warehousing, et cetera, et cetera. So again, product strategy, all of our products themselves tie into one another. Nothing really competes against each other. Um, and we do that so that we can have a holistic solution approach uh, instead of it being a case of, uh, a, you know, providing you multiple options, we provide you effectively what we consider the best option in class. So today we're going to be looking at Spectralink. Uh, and Soji. So, uh, the Special University has been out for a little over 12 months now. Um, it is basically the best of breed, as I was saying, uh, for an enterprise grade smartphone solution. Uh, instead of your uh, typical smartphone, uh, which are very fragile devices, uh, the Spectral University is purpose built uh, with end users in mind. So, it's a case of a fully hardened device um, encompassing. Uh, fiberglass reinforced plastics. Um, so if you drop this on a particular handset uh, on concrete or a hard surface, uh, and I do this in uh, enjoyable tests as well uh, and demonstrations, it's not actually going to break. It has been mil-spec tested uh, to be extraordinarily uh, durable, which is fantastic. Um, also the fact that um, you can put it in water, drop it in water if need to. Um, and one of the key capabilities is uh, I'm not sure if you can see me on screen. I hope you can. That's the battery. I've got the battery on my phone right now and the phone's still working as we can see. So a true hot topable battery. So again, leading the market uh, in all terms there. Management of the handset then is also then tied in with um, Spectralink's um, Advanced Mobility Intelligence for Enterprise or AMI um, and the Spectralink um, Application Manager or SAN. So that actual program itself really tied to utilizing the spectral and uh, dedicated applications that are built into the phone. We then couple that with so, um, Sochi Mobi Control. 
which is an enterprise um, mobility engine, basically, or MDM. So a couple of the key verticals that we uh, sell these solutions into, obviously healthcare uh, being effectively Wavelink's bread and butter, and definitely Spectralink's are probably key um, vertical as well. Healthcare, and that of course, uh, of course incorporates um, uh, hospitals, aged care, retirement living, etc. So they have a myriad of different devices that you can sell into those solutions. Hospitality as well. Um, so hotels, anything in the hospitality industry uh, can still also utilize the capabilities of Spectralink. Retail, especially with some of the capabilities of both the uh, Versity or then the uh, older 8400 series, uh, we still have great capabilities in retail as well, especially with the push to talk functionality, which is effectively a walkie talkie. And um, then again, the durability, manufacturing and warehousing, uh, all of the uh, Spectralink handsets are really focused on that capability as well, which is excellent. So I'm not gonna bore you with everything on this slide. I just thought I'd throw up the uh, key stats on the handset, but again, uh, so it's an Android 8.1 enterprise um, version of uh, Google Android screen. Again, mil spec tested, um, IP68 rated, Gorilla Glass reinforced, um, and also um, a key, lots of other key features. But basically this device itself it's completely unlocked and gives you the full capabilities um, of the Android um, Play Store. So any app that you wanted to put on the device, you can. Uh, any app that isn't on the device and you wanted to actually utilize one, or you can uh, find an app developer and actually write a new application for it anyway. All the use cases that we see uh, with Aversity um, that we actually incorporate with our holistic um, solution approach with our different vendors that we're a distributor for. Uh, so being able to quickly raise tasks, uh, locate people or assets on the device when it's tying into some of our other key applications like Um Scanning uh, med medication or patient tags or uh, stock inventory control with the um, 9553 or the uh, 9653, which has a barcode scanner actually built in. The Zebra barcode scanner as well. So it's actually the industry leading barcode scanner actually built in the spectral adversity. Um, remote monitoring and medication um, and food fridges, again, that ties into other products that we sell like Centrac um, and Alinqua. Um, effective sanitary control, obviously very key at the moment with the COVID-19 um, issues that we are having. Spectral adversity, again, I've got, uh, I have six adversities with me currently. Um, I've also got a personal mobile phone and I've also got my work mobile phone as well. So I've got plenty of mobiles with me uh, right now. I, of course, wouldn't use uh, proper chemical um, sanitizers on my personal or work phone because they're not designed for it. Where again, Spectral Inversity, it has that specifically built in to its capabilities. So very, very, very functional device. Um, uh, electronic medical records as well. Fully secure device. So again, really focusing on all those capabilities. The Spectralink Versity, uh, and then the management of that particular device. How do we go about managing the device? There are multiple different ways to manage different types of devices. The way that we do it best and the way that we see it done best is actually incorporating both the Spectralink um, Amy um, SAM server, so the Spectralink application manager, and then also tying it down to be a really work focused device with a product like Sobe Modi, uh, Mobi Control. Some people might say, well, what, why don't we just use um, Sobe Mobi Control to do everything? Well, you can only do certain amounts with Sobe Mobi, Mobi Control. You can do enterprise level configuration with Mobi Control, but you can't get a really granular level of customization and configuration for your site. So that's where we also uh, tie in and have it almost as a mandatory where um, the Spectral Application Manager is a, a one in one um, or a hand in hand, I should say, um, package that goes with the Spectral Inversity as well. So as we can see there, some of the um, features and functionality, um, especially with Mobi Control, it's a cloud-based platform. Um, I will be logging into that to give you a bit of a run through and a bit of a snapshot today as well. You can do remote control of the devices as well. So if someone was uh, experiencing issues, uh, with a handset, it doesn't have to be a special university. If you had a fleet that you wanted to manage that also incorporated tablets, laptops, other devices, printers even. 
doesn't matter that the operating system, you can do that through serving motor, motor control as well. Um, but again, we'll get onto that shortly. So how does it all tie in together as well? So I've got my little training lab, being the channel uh, enablement manager, I fly around the country when I'm allowed to fly around the country um, and actually teach um, hands-on technical training to our partners uh, and customers as well sometimes as well. But basically I have a lab set up in, uh, in my office at home currently uh, with the SAM server that's built on a uh, NUC PC that's running VMware. Um, so basically SAM itself has to be built onto a server on the network uh, or in the data center, uh, if you wanted it remotely as well, as long as it's tied back in with your routing, then it's fine. Uh, and then that then ties in to so, um, Sobe Motor, con Motor Control. Sobe Motor Control handles all the certificates uh, that are required to allow these handsets to actually um, authenticate um, and pull down all the applications, tie onto um, the Amy Sam server, um, and start working across the network as well. So. Enough of talking about the slides. I'm actually going to, as I said, jump into some uh, actual relevant information. Do, 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 do. All right, so I'm going to take you through an actual run through of how to um, configure or set up and configure the uh, Spectralink SAM server from scratch. Um, so using VMware vSphere. Um, client, uh, I'll then be loading up a uh, OVA template, which can be downloaded uh, from the Spectralink support site. So, put them there. So we find our right file. Open the right file. Click next. Click next again. I'll give it a simple name for us to this demo. Click next. Standard there. And I'm going to also select power on afterwards. So that will go through in the back end, actually build the virtual machine. Once that's finished building uh, in the VCA client, uh, I'll then be able to go in on the command line through the console uh, to actually set up the networking and application details that are required to actually then browse to the IP address of uh, the Spectralink uh, SAM server. So we'll just wait for that to uh, complete itself um, and then we'll jump on and we'll take you for a run through um, a SAM itself. Okay, so the SAM server is uh, finished building uh, in its VM instance. Um, so we'll close that. So from here, I can actually click on the new SAM server. If I go to the actual console, um, I can then do the initial provisioning um, of the SAM server itself. So Default username and password. Sam. Sam. All right. So from here, we're going to change directory. So it's a simple CD bin. Uh, then it is sudo Python network initialize or py. Then going to enter the designated IP address that I want to give my SAM server. Network mask. Uh, default gateway. And also the DNS server. Don't have a secondary. So that'll actually then go through uh, reboot itself uh, and have those network parameters. But the next step from there, we actually have to set up our uh, application settings as well. So once this is restarted, I'll jump back in. So again, simple SAM and SAM. Again, we're going to change directory. We're going to go to CD bin. Uh, then I'm going to do the similar um, syntax CD, uh, so sudo Python application initialize.python. Uh, Keeping the same IP address of 10.225.2.235, obviously the network address for your um, own network or customer's network will uh, be entered in there or you will have entered in the right details. I'm going to reset uh, my DNS to what I wanted it as well. Don't have a secondary. 
AU for the country code. I'm in Victoria, uh, Hawthorne, or where Wakeland's office is. Going to set a simple password. And again, it'll go through the same reboot process as well uh, to set those uh, application settings as well. Once that is uh, rebooted again, uh, we should then uh, be able to actually go in um, and log into the server itself. We'll just wait for that to reboot. Uh, no, no Active Directory. Okay. Just restarting now. All right, there we go. I'll just log in again, Sam and Sam. All right, so that's all online. It's going to bring up a new window. So 10.225.2.235. Um, in theory, should be able to log in. There we go. So click advance and proceed. As long as that's going to work uh, fine for me, we should then be able to log in. All right. So from here, the account name, oh sorry, the account number, that'll actually be provided to you by Spectralink. So whenever you uh, acquire a new SAM server, get the licensing, and you'll get an account number. For my training lab, uh, the simple account number that's been given to me. So uh, I'm going to give it uh, some general details to log in. Uh, doesn't match. Much better. Okay. So that should then log in to our brand new SAM server. Um, of course, straight out of the box, um, there won't be any handsets uh, registered to the SAM server. Uh, we've been given our unique account key as well. And the account key is quite important because it'll be used uh, to allow handsets to authenticate. Um, onto the SAM server itself when you're provisioning through SOTI uh, Mobile Control. So again, it's just looking at the console itself, uh, SAM server, for those that haven't ever seen a SAM server before, um, this is basically how we manage our spectral applications and the handsets um, from a high level and a detailed level as well. So some of the key things to look at in the SAM server itself, we're having a look here, uh, we actually have our About SAM tab. This tab itself is actually very, very important. This has our application version, so running the latest version of SAM. Uh, we also have the account key. As I said, that's very important, and I'll show you why that's very important in a moment. Uh, but that ties into how the handsets, once they're onboarded, um, associate not only to the SOTI Mobi control, uh, but then also replicate and are authorized to be um, configured on the SAM server itself. So we also have this self-signed certificate. So if I open a notepad clip in here, drag that up. I've just copied that to clipboard. As we can see, we have a very large uh, self-signed certificate that also needs to be loaded up. So I do have a pre-built SAM server. So let me just bring that in. We'll close off the old one because it's not actually needed at the moment. So this SAM server itself has um, Versity handsets that have already been um, authorized and configured onto the SAM server. As we can see, uh, all the devices here uh, have been uh, onboarded. I've got a few of them turned off at the moment, uh, but we've got a few that are also on. So the heartbeat itself from the handsets comes in every uh, 15 minutes. So the handset will check in with the SAM server to make sure that there's been no configuration changes. So the list of devices here as well are actually what are known as approved devices. If they're in the device list, as we can see uh, on the side here, they're actually being approved to be on uh, and configured by the SAM server itself. If they're in the device holding area, that means they've only just been onboarded onto the SAM server. They actually need to be approved. So if we had a list of phones here, we could actually select uh, to approve those devices. I'll have a look over here. We've got pending, approved or rejected. 
And then I'll write my approved devices. You'll see the list of six handsets that are there uh, and can actually be configured. Those handsets, if I go back to the device list, you can actually configure them uh, individually. So you can set up their individual um, settings or their SIP extension, this is a great example. Um, or you can configure them um, also um, from a, a group or an enterprise level as well. Now, one of the other really important things that I'm going to show you is actually how SOTI, uh, SOTI Mobile Control uh, works in conjunction uh, with the SAM server. So if we're having a look at um, SOTI Mobile Control, this is the console itself, and this is what you're looking, you'd be looking at if you're just uh, looking at the device list itself. So as you can see, I've got a couple of handsets that are on at the moment. I can actually click and view those handsets. I can get real-time uh, diagnostics and real-time information about those handsets as well. If I wanted to, um, I could also remote view into the handset um, and actually check configuration uh, and capabilities of those handsets. It's a very useful troubleshooting tool. One of the things I highlighted before was the account key and the self-signed certificate. I'm just going to show you why that's actually important. So if I go to our rules area and I click on the Android Plus logo, I've then got my uh, Versity training uh, profile or my add device profile that's been created. So <clears throat> this profile itself is what I use and what can be used for onboarding uh, handsets onto uh, a new network. So if you had a large fleet of handsets that you were going to be rolling out uh, for either your site or a customer's site, basically the most efficient way of doing this is with what's known as a bump technique. So using NFC. So with uh, either another device, whether it be another mobile phone that has NFC capabilities or even just an NFC card as well, you can program up uh, relevant details for this enrollment ID. Um, you can then configure it with the SSID uh, and security uh, credentials to get it onto the network. Once it's onto the network, it will use this enrollment ID uh, to then dial out to SOTI Mobile Control Cloud, identify with this enrollment ID that it's attached to this Versity Training um, Add Device Profile, um, and it will then also look at the application catalog that ties to the setting as well. So the application catalog in SOTI Mobi Control is actually where we get to some more, more granular capabilities and configuration. So this is how we can allow applications uh, to be authorized to be on what is supposed to be a work-focused device. Now, again, why was I pointing out the account key uh, and the self-signed certificate? To allow handsets to actually join the SAM server, we have to uh, in, we have to uh, give them their um, account key uh, and self-signed certificate. So they are then able to be authorized to join the actual SAM server. So if I click on here, let me just go back one step. If I have a look at the application catalog that's been authorized, um, I can then show the SAM client, which is a Spectralink application. All of these here are Spectralink applications outside of YouTube and LinkedIn, of course. Um, I can then edit that application. If I click on advanced here, I can then see relevant detail. So I've set the application to mandatory. I've enabled the application. I've enabled the heartbeat, which is very important as well. The heartbeat's not enabled. Uh, it's, the handsets themselves won't call out to the SAM server once they're on the network, and they won't um, accept a connection to each other. I've then got the URL of my SAM server. If I just highlight uh, my SAM server here, as we can see, the same IP address there. Um, so from there, I've also then, if I just click back to my SAM server, I click back here, my account key right there is the same as this one here. And then that self-signed certificate is all the way through here. So those two key pieces of data are uploaded to the application within SOTI Mobi Control, uh, and any phone 
that is then onboarded using the enrolment ID here, us university training, using this enrolment ID, will then be authorised to download these applications and knowing that it has the right account key and self-signed certificate will then be allowed to join the SAM server itself. So these handsets themselves, of course, have all been authorised um, with that account key and self-signed certificate to actually join the SAM server. Now, one of the key aspects of why we use both Specialink SAM uh, server and then SOTI Mobi Control is the fact that with SOTI Mobi Control, yes, you can authorise applications and yes, you can actually do configuration of the applications within SOTI Mobi Control as well. But those configuration changes are actually done at what we call the enterprise level. So if you have a smaller customer that uh, only had a small amount of phones, uh, that didn't have organisation units within uh, the um, business that didn't require different settings and setup for their uh, organisational units, and you could roll out the same um, uh, enterprise-wide solution, then that might be okay. But when you've got a larger customer that actually has more organisational units uh, needs customised configuration of how the handsets are going to be rolled out, that's where SAM really comes into its own. With SAM, you have, as I mentioned briefly before, the ability to work at the enterprise, group, or device level. So anything that is configured on the enterprise level is a useful feature or functionality that would then be pushed out across the enterprise. So in a great example um, is our SIP server settings, so our PBX settings. So in my training lab, I've got a SIP server that's um, configured. I am pointing my enterprise level configuration to that SIP server. So any of the handsets that actually join actually get that configuration. If I click to my device list and select one of the handsets, I've got one of the ones that's actually on at the moment, change the configuration. If I then come down to my biz phone application, which is the native um, application on the handset, if I have a look at it, it's already been programmed with a PBX SIP server um, IP address. And as you can see here, it's actually grayed out. So I can't make a change unless I needed to or wanted to. Um, as you can see here, um, you can edit the settings if you needed to. Uh, but that is the settings that I want for all of the phones in this instance that want to come over and be configured. But in saying that, this handset itself would have an individual extension number. So as an example, I'll just quickly give it one. I'm going to click Save. I'm going to send that configuration to the handset now. So there we go, it's actually just picked up its configuration. So that handset now is configured with 1508 as its extension, uh, which is great. So if I come back to the device list, again, we're looking at configuring at the device level. The other key point here is if you had a multi-tenancy, so uh, multiple sites for either your, your business or a customer's business that had a SIP server at each site, um, you could then set up if we have a look at a demo, a demo uh, test group here, we could set up individual SIP servers for each different site. So if I just go back to our group functionality here, again on the side, uh, if we had, you know, if I could type, Sydney office as an example, select some handsets, go those two there, click save, and then configure this group. Select action, configure. Again, if this particular group had a different SIP server, um, you know, we could configure that specific SIP server for that specific site to only phones that are actually uh, assigned to that organization. So again, this is one of the major differentiators between what 
SOTI motor control can do and why uh, Spectralink's Amy SAM server is actually still very, very important uh, and all basically a requirement when it comes to actually uh, purchasing um, the Versity, uh, Spectralink Versity handset. Now, one of the other key points about group configuration as well <clears throat> really comes down to, uh, again, some of the other key capabilities of the Spectral Inversity handset. Especially when it comes to our uh, safe functionalities, uh, so that's man down, uh, tilt, running, um, et cetera, and then also the panic alarms as well. So the Spectral Inversity out of the box actually has a dedicated GRS button. So that feature and functionality when tied in with another third party um, application like Alinqua, which we sell also, uh, and then also an RCLS engine, you can basically pinpoint on a map where someone is if they raise a duress event. Uh, obviously very, very useful, uh, very key for staff safety as well. But that configuration and that capability sometimes isn't required across the whole enterprise. You could split it up into your organizational groups, um, say, if it's, again, if it's healthcare and it's a hospital, uh, then you would definitely look at um, utilizing that functionality for, say, nurses, or orderlies, doctors, etc. People that are working in the ward who might have um, potential security threats or issues uh, within their day-to-day -day, um, job. So actually being able to set up your groups um, and configure them is, again, not actually capable within SOTI, but fully capable within um, SAM server itself. Again, if we're looking at push to talk functionality, so PTT, it's effectively a broadcast uh, message, so it works over multicast over the Wi-Fi, effectively turns the handset into um, a one-way speech channel or allows you to send one-way speech across um, the network. So again, would generally be broken up into a group function. You can have managers that sit over the top and listen to all the transmissions, um, just to make sure that people aren't misusing it. Uh, but effectively, it allows the staff to push uh, out critical and simple communication to each other without actually having to uh, make a phone call, basically. Uh, so very, very useful um, capabilities. Uh, and again, just one of the um, simple functions that's built in um, to SAM, being able to manage it, again, at that granular level to really customise the solution. Now, in terms of one of the uh, key uh, capabilities as well when it comes to actually updating the handsets is your sysup data. So actually um, upgrading the firmware on the Versity handset. Firmware itself is downloadable from Specialink's support site. Then it's literally a case of setting up a web server, uh, pointing the uh, handset to the IP address of the web server. I've got one set up on my laptop, obviously just for training uh, and testing purposes. So I, I can basically uh, set up an IP address, point it to my um, relative path that's on my web server, uh, and then I can trigger an OTA or an over-the-air update, um, and that will effectively call out to the handsets. The handsets will then check the firmware version, uh, and if it's not the latest version that you're specifying, uh, it will then pull down that um, configuration update. Obviously, if you were doing it, you'd want to make sure uh, that you were doing it after or not after hours if you're in a hospital because they're a 24 hour organization, uh, but doing it at a time that's going to uh, impact the um, handsets in a minimal way also. All right, now what I'm also going to show you is actually one of the processes uh, of how easy it is to actually onboard a device. So I'm just going to bring up uh, my handset. I've got SOTI, uh, SOTI um, stage programmer on this handset. So in terms of onboarding devices, um, as I said earlier, easiest way to do it generally is with an NFC bump. Um, again, you can do that with a mobile device like I'm doing here, so it can have a bit more of a visual display. Or you could just get an NFC card uh, and program just as we've got here, a Wi-Fi details, um, both the SSID and the password, uh, and then again, that enrollment ID. If I come back to our uh, SOTI Mobi Control, go back to those rules, I go to Versity Training, and I have a look here, PYBNXY29 is my enrollment ID. So that itself is configured, ready to go. Got a brand new uh, Versity handset uh, that is fresh, um, out of the box basically, or just reset. Um, and what I can do is then effectively 
I click back over to my stage program. I hit NFC, tap them together, click tap, try that again. Third time's a charm. Click accept. Um, so that has already um, had the handset connect to the, the SSID and authenticate. It'll now sit here uh, and basically um, pull down all of its details uh, and configuration from SOTI Mobile Control. So again, that actually ties back to diversity training. Uh, diversity training itself. Um, or it's a training folder, I should say, uh, Versity, application, uh, Versity Training Application Catalog has been authorized with these specific applications. So when that handset comes in, it will actually be authorized to pull down these applications again. As I said earlier, it will also uh, pull down its SAM client details um, and then be conf uh, configurable within SAM itself. We'll go to back here to the device list. We should effectively see it once it comes online, hit the device uh, list holding area. But once it hits that device uh, holding area on SAM, um, it again will be uh, able to be configured. If I go back to the mobile control, um, it will also appear uh, in the list here once it's finished configuring itself um, and has set itself up with its Mobi Control app. Uh, with that NFC bump with my stage programmer, um, the handset is now configurable uh, within um, SOTI Mobi Control. We can see, um, I know it's this handset because of its uh, uh, battery signal, uh, or battery percentage is right down at the moment, I need to charge it. Um, so basically I can see that it's on here. Not only has it been uh, authorised in, uh, in with the Versity Training Group or folder on Sodi Mobile Control, but pop over to SAM, as we can see here, I have a new um, handset that can now be authorised on the network. So I can, this is in the device holding area, as I was saying earlier. Device holding area is where the handsets come to once they've been initially provisioned. From here, you can then select an action approve them, reject them, uh, export all devices. Obviously the existing handsets have already been approved. So I'm just going to go back here, select device, and I'm going to approve it. From here, and again, that handset uh, is F0, this one here, uh, because I checked its MAC address. Uh, but I could basically then come in here and actually do some configuration changes, um, again, on that device level. So if I come over and configure its biz phone, I'm going to give it an extension as well. Phone nine, phone nine. Save configuration, and I'm going to send the configuration now. If you don't send the configuration now, and of course, if you didn't want the configuration sent straight away, that's fine. Um, if you send the configuration now, um, it will push it straight to the device. But if you uh, didn't want to make the configuration change, you can always um, wait for the 15 minute um, interval timer to um, expire anyway. So I'll just double check that I've got the password right. Cool, so one thing we can also do, uh, which is very useful, is actually um, remote control the handsets. So if I pop over to the handset, and oh, let's actually click on the handset itself. Again, as I was saying, within SOTI Mobile Control, you've got a lot of granularity of what you can actually see uh, in terms of diagnostics and valid information on the handset, which is very, very useful. You can see the IP address that it's on, what version of Android, obviously um, Android Plus. Uh, the device ID is its uh, MAC address as well. Uh, OS version that's running currently. Uh, what else have we got that's valid and useful? Network RSS to RSSI value at that given time as well, which SSID it's connected to, et cetera. Uh, the available memory, which again, can be very useful uh, to know those details. But we have this remote view function up here. If 
I click Remote View, click OK, should be able to then view that handset remotely, which gives you a lot of flexibility as an administrator. To be able to actually remote into a handset um, and see what is going on is, of course, very, very useful. Now, one thing you'll notice, this handset looks like it's locked down. There's not much configuration or capability here. That's exactly right. I've actually fired up this handset um, in this way to show you that lockdown capability. So all I've allowed on the handset is actually the biz phone. Wait for that. I dial 1508, which is the other extension that I configured earlier. Other phones ringing. I can get a live call working, which is great. The other thing that I set up on here, of course, as well, was the SAM client. That way, if you needed to make configuration changes uh, on the fly, you can actually set the heartbeat instantaneously. But if we have a look at our settings here also, again, ties back to what was sent from the enrollment uh, and the configuration of the SAM client within SOTI Mobile Control is our account key, um, server URL, uh, etc. And of course, the heartbeat's turned on. So the certificate, uh, the self-signed certificate, is stored on the phone itself. It doesn't actually um, get listed here, uh, but it gives you that level of detail. As an administrator, you can also get out of your lockdown functionality as well. So I've set up a standard default uh, password, and actually, let me just go back one. I'm going to cancel that uh, to get out of it. As an administrator, press and hold the back button. That'll show up. Uh, I'll type in the password, three, four. Again, that's the password that I set. Um, and now we've got the full functionality um, and capability of the phone. So this is the Mobi Control app. It's actually been installed on the handset itself. So if I have a look at the um, application catalog, we can actually see uh, there's a list of other applications uh, that have been authorized uh, to be installed on the handset. If they're not authorized, um, then they won't actually be allowed to be installed. Because we, if we click on the Play Store, you need to sign in. And of course, as an enterprise device, well, you'd probably get rid of the Play Store anyway, so people can't install games and that sort of stuff. Uh, but you would actually need to sign in with a profile to actually get access to that. So as an administrator, we can actually log in, um, check the functionality remotely, and have um, I'm literally swiping on the handset uh, myself. Uh, to actually check the functionality um, as we go. Um, so you can have someone live on site with their handset uh, going to the settings, checking settings, all that sort of stuff, so you can actually see what's going on with that handset. Now, if I go back to uh, Soti Mobile Control console itself, I'm going to show you the lockdown functionality, which is actually very, very useful. Again, think about that organizational uh, requirement for the handsets. Again, these handsets um, are supposed to be used, uh, obviously, as a work-focused device. So the ways that we can actually look at locking that down and making sure that they're a work-focused device uh, is by setting up um, our lockdown functionality. If I scroll down here to my Versity training, I can have a look at uh, the configuration. Uh, so I've got the lockdown functionality turned on. If I edit that, I'm then going to click over here and we have a look at the lockdown. So I've, of course, just set up a couple of um, very simple parameters with those two specific applications. Um, if I wanted to click and create a new one, I can give it a relevant name. Um, I, can, I then need the actual scripting name um, as well, but it will then fire up. If I just have a look at one of these as an example, um, that itself is part of the URL for the application that's uh, in the... Um, add uh, applications in the Versity uh, training folder. So I'll just show you that as well. So I cancel out of there. But basically this functionality really lets the uh, administrator or an organization lock down their devices so that they are work focused devices, uh, which is very, very useful. So that uh, URL that I'm using is basically the tail end of uh, these applications here. So you can basically find any of those, anything that you actually want to utilize 
uh, and put onto the device, you've got that capability of then locking the handset down. So again, very, very uh, functional capabilities, both with SAM uh, and so to the motor control. Now also, if you want to add new applications to the handsets as well, again, from an administrative standpoint, it is literally a case of finding the application that you want to add. Uh, if we click Add, Manage Google Play, I'm going to go to the Play Store. I'm going to find a relevant application. Oops, let me go out of that. Try that again. That'll find all of the apps basically that are authorized on. No uh, short uh, terms of applications. Any applications that aren't there, or you needed a certain functionality for tying into. Um, a business function or um, you know, basically like a nurse call or something like that, um, you can have an app developer actually write your own app um, and um, put it up on the Play Store or have it um, available um, so that way you could install it on the handset itself. So let me install, let me find an app, pick an app in the app. Let's just go to Firefox browser, just do something quick and simple. So I've clicked on it. Now I actually need to approve it. So if I click approve, that'll approve it to be within my um, organizational list of applications that I could then install on the handset itself. So I'm going to click uh, done. Close that. And then search. And where's my Firefox? Cool. So I just had to synchronize that, synchronize my applications that I've all approved. Now, if I click OK, I've then, got, of course, got the advanced options. There's not a great deal available here. We can uh, have it mandatory if that was a preferred browser or whatever you wanted to use on your site, uh, on your workplace. Uh, click OK. Now it's actually in the list of applications that are allowed on the handsets. So one thing I'll do, I'm just going to click OK there. I'm going to go back to my handset. I'm still remote viewing. Um, if I go back to my Mobi Control application, I'll just fire that up. I'm going to go back to the application catalog. I'm going to click uh, the list of applications. We should see that Firefox isn't actually uh, authorized, or it's there at the moment, but we haven't actually pushed it down properly. So what I need to do is go back to uh, my profile itself. So I'm going to view devices. Then I'm going to send an update to the devices. So update the agent. So you can schedule that if you wanted to, if it was a big push or a large information that needs to be sent to the devices, or you can update now. So I'm going to do a start now. So that will then update all relevant uh, devices. Obviously I've got six here, but only two are, uh, two are turned off at the moment as well. So if I Have a look back on my handset itself. I'll just check and see whether or not um, that is fully capable of being installed now. Diversity training, if I scroll along here, should in theory have Firefox. So that's an update. I'll install that. So you've actually got the capability of um, approving the applications, but if you don't want to install them, um, obviously, as you can see here, you can still go through a manual installation process if you wanted to. Um, again, uh, it's just a you know, good way of stopping uh, the devices uh, from getting applications that you might not necessarily want them uh, to have immediately, but having them certainly approved um, or in that approval list also. I'm just conscious of time. Um, is there anything else, anyone else, where's the uh, chat function? Is there anything else anyone wanted to see specifically um, while you've got me? Feel free to use the chat.
Obviously, there's a lot of features and capabilities that uh, I could go through, but again, we wanted this just to be a really um, uh, good snapshot of the capabilities uh, without uh, bogging everyone down uh, with too much information in one hit. So um, yeah, feel free to throw anything in the, um, the chat. Um, and uh, if not, you've got my details as well. Um, feel free to actually um, uh, contact me or any of our other team um, to have a bit more of a focused chat around the key capabilities the customization of the lockdown yeah great question michael so the the lockdown screen itself um it obviously didn't look the prettiest if you've got a web developer or web development skills you can actually go to the higher level of uh making it look really really nice um the uh so to basically give you uh, the basis of what you um, might want or need and if i just jump back into here for have a look at my versity training um and go to go to the packages so you can actually customize it completely so it looks a lot uh more tailored to your solution or the customer's solution with your own um headers uh functionality all that sort of stuff so the template here is a basic template you could then go into the detail of actually adding in you know the right coding uh, with just HTML coding to actually make that landing page look a lot nicer um, and customize it um, change the shape and um, size of the images add more images as well I'll add more hot um, buttons um, to allow you to view and uh, launch more applications as you can see here I've only added a few in there um, but you could actually add more applications if you wanted to as well hopefully that answers your question We've got um, two more in the main um, chat box, Nathan. Yep. Um, so the first one from Bilal, if there is an internal outage, what would be the best process to ensure everything's back after the outage? Right, so um, by default, so and a great question, Bilal. The, um, by default, once the handsets have their configuration, um, unless, well, if it's a full site-wide outage, power out, et cetera, well, if they're on the Wi-Fi, they're not going to work too well anyway. Um, but if they were, um, if it was just purely a case of, say, for some reason, the server that hosted the um, SAM server went down, the handsets are still going to work. Shouldn't be any issue, basically, because the handsets themselves have the configuration. Effectively, all they can't do is uh, dial back to the SAM server to check if there's any configuration changes. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue. In terms of Sobe Mo, uh, Sobe Mobi control, um, similar thing again, it won't be too much of an issue because once everything's pre-configured and the handsets are working the way they're supposed to, um, it, if there is a drop in um, connectivity, they should continue uh, business as usual. Uh, can Sochi, uh, Sochi, yeah, run on premise? I think they do have an on-prem um, solution. Let me uh, double check that, John. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to say yes uh, because yeah, most of the time we do um, go with the mobile control um, cloud option anyway. So let me double check that for you, um, and I'll get back to you. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Static web page. Um, great question. Um, yeah, I'll have to ask with the guys. Yeah, because the kiosk kiosk mode, which was actually the name of the lockdown previously, um, is yeah whether or not you could actually just customize that whole uh, home screen um, to then hyperlink a web page and back into the applications is. Um, whether or not that's what you wanted to do, Michael. Um, it could be done, possibly. I'd have to check again. I, I shouldn't say it could be done. Possibly could be done. Um, I'd need to check with this, um, the Sochi guys as well. A table on the wall. Uh, there's a uh, force stuck on one page, one web page. Uh, URL. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, let me check with the Sochi guys um, just to clarify whether you could do that. Yeah, if you only wanted you know, one application, 
um, because yeah, as you saw, it's a um, hyperlink back to the back end URL, uh, URL um, of the application itself. If I just show you, this is an example. So it's literally doing yeah, a launch, um, knowing that the application's in the back end and it's approved. So, um, and as you saw, and let me just bring that up again. Um, if I go to, do, 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 view devices, Damn, which handset did I choose? Uh, 82, I think it was. Remote view. Yeah, it's literally a case of looking at those um, specific um, hyperlinks which tie back to the back end. New permissions in Android 10. Um, interestingly, yeah, same thing I'd need to check. The Moby control at this point in time. Look at that. Wrong handset. Uh, the handsets or the um, these um, devices, obviously, the um, versus is Android eight point one at the moment. So that I can't check. I would imagine um, they do have capabilities for uh, Android ten. Uh, they should not basically, they should, are supposed to, you know, cover all versions of basically everyone's operating system. So again, that's uh, Android, um, iOS, uh, Linux, Windows, um, Apple, Mac OS, etc. Um, so yeah, it shouldn't be too much of an issue with Android 10. Cool. No worries, guys. I think that's all the questions. Um, thank you again, Nathan, for a, a very engaging session. The audience seems to have loved it. Audience, thank you very much for taking the time. Um, we'll circulate a recording of this session for you to uh, use with your teams internally. But like Nathan said, um, you do have his details should you have any further questions or would like a one-to-one -one demo. Um, thank you very much for joining. It's been a pleasure. I hope you have a great rest of, rest of your day. Thanks, guys.